Hi everybody, um, this week we are going to be answering some questions. <laughs> Spilling the beans on, well, I guess things that some of you have been asking over the last few months. And yeah, we just thought, well, what better way than just actually sitting down and, and maybe just being pretty candid with the state of affairs here and answering questions that you, you want answering. And we have some time because no one's sleeping. We have okay. a baby Keep our, here. <laughs> keep your fingers crossed on that one. Yeah. So um, should we just get to it and start with the first question? Yeah, absolutely. Which I think actually is probably more a question for you because it's why did we buy a chateau? Mm. Uh, why did we buy a chateau? Well, it, for me, it was a long, it's been a dream for a long time. Um, um, it was actually my sister who brought to my attention the fact that you could buy incredibly cheap property uh, in France, so get a lot of bang for your buck, if you will. Uh, so I started looking around, and I just couldn't believe it. It's just ridiculously And that was before you met priced. me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was um, yeah, yeah. quite a few years before I met you. Um, and um, it's just been a dream that's kind of, it's just been there in the background, um, quite gently it hasn't really um been too loud but uh then when we were looking to get married uh we came to this area in the Dordogne and uh, really really fell in love with the area fell in love with the all the amazing food the vistas the architecture everything really and um and yeah we started looking uh in this area but we had looked loads around as well from the yeah. south of France. Um, we did a whole road trip with my parents that time, didn't we, where we kind of just took it kind of day by day and probably covered, yeah, what, five, six hundred kilometers, something like eight hundred kilometers to get More to. More like eight hundred. Yeah. We came all the way up here from... Yeah, stopping and looking and, and getting inspiration for and seeing what would, would suit us, but I guess, whilst we didn't get married in the Dordogne, we got married in the south of France, we... Uh, we just fell in love with it, didn't we? Mm. And I think our, our our search very quickly focused in on 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 that area. And let's face it, if you look at properties in the south of France, because we love the south south, so by the Mediterranean as well, yeah. uh, absolutely adore uh, that area as well. But when you look at the property prices there, well, you can get maybe well, not even a plot, not even a small small plot for what we got uh, this place for. I don't even know if there are any plots no, that are cheap. No, no, there aren't. No, literally. No. I think probably you'd need to pay about half a million to get a plot, just a plot a without tiny, anything on it. Yeah. It'd be tiny. Um, whereas we paid, what, 170,000 euros for... Yeah. And I mean, it, it's not like we had more money to spend on a property. Um, no. So, uh, so yeah. So that's a very convoluted way of saying, why did we buy a chateau? But it, it was a dream and we eventually followed it. Yeah, and I guess, why, why France? Well, I guess, as you just said, you know, just the fact that property is cheap in certain places. <laughs> but also, I don't know, I think the way of life. I mean, I was quite lucky in the fact that as a kid, although I didn't appreciate it at the time, uh, I did grow up in, in well, when, where my parents used to live, which was on the Côte d'Azur, um, for about four years uh, in my early teenage years and things. And it's, it's very different. I think I was... For a long, long time, drawn to the fast pace, you know, competitive nature of London, and I lived there for well over twenty years. And you know what? This change has been magnificent. Um, I love the nature. I love the, the food. I love the weather. The weather. Sometimes. Most I mean, of all, though, it's been raining a lot these last eight, nine months. Insanely so. Um, but I think that's been true probably of all a lot of places around yeah. around Europe and things as well. So, yeah, and I guess for you, you remember you you were inspired by uh, <laughs> Russell Crowe and. Oh gosh, yeah, who's not? That is such a good film, uh, a good year. I love that. It's one of my favourite movies, and the way that um, the director, whose name is now, um, Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott, how he's captured that, how he's captured the London life versus the life in South of France. It's just Probably mesmerizing. Probably sounds like So if you're wondering why, that's why. And I guess it. I'm also relatively lucky, obviously, for the Brits watching with Brexit. It's been a lot more complicated. I have dual nationality, which is great. Nicole's Swedish as well as British. And so it, it makes it a lot easier for us to just kind of uproot our lives and mm. and. Uh, and move to France in, in that respect. And of course, little Noah is, is French. Yeah. So, uh, 
and we know we're very lucky that way. Uh, we know so many, well, Brits especially, of course, have had issues coming uh, to France and, and actually having to sell their properties because of Brexit, which is such a, well, massive, massive shame. Yeah, especially because especially obviously, you know, when we speak to the locals here, the French, they're always like, oh, you know, we actually really appreciate the British coming over because they're the ones who end up kind of renovating all of these mm. kind of abandoned places which have been standing empty for, for decades and decades. And, so, and make successful businesses out of them and make the community well. around them thrive, which is what we want to do as well, even though we, we have some thriving businesses right here in our village. So we'll just add to that. We're not going to revive the, any <laughs> anything per se in this village, but, uh, but we'll add to it, which is nice. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of our hopes and our, and our dreams, I don't know if that's probably maybe a question. For you. For so you. what are your hopes and dreams for the Chateau? <laughs> <laughs> they're definitely you. Um, no, because you have your tower that you want to build and I block yourself into. I talked about that last time, so I'm not going to. No, but I think for me, we've always said we wanted something big enough to be able to host our families at special mm. occasions, at Christmases, and all those sorts of things. And it might sound a little bit silly that we need this many bedrooms and <laughs> this much room, but actually, it's a big family. Um, and so actually, it is almost necessary. But then, of course, we wanted to you know, create the business side of it as well. And you know, with my background now for the last, well, well over eight years now, I've been doing kind of well-being within organizations and trying to support people with their mental health at work. And for me, I think one of the, the key things that has been missing in that juncture is having somewhere, a space where people can come, get away from it all and reset. And, you know, from that perspective, this setting is so magical for that. Nature is a, is a really curative thing. And we're surrounded by it in, in spades um, mm. and it's beautiful. And in addition to the well-being retreats, so what we're also planning to do is run leadership development programs. So that's something that I did and have been doing for the majority of my career. So creating high impact leadership programs where you focus bo both on the leading yourself aspect and how important that is for yourself and the people that you are leading, managing. And then also the aspect of kind of leading your business, running your business and, and creating successful strategies for your business. So I'm gonna, no, so I'll ask you this question, Nick. Uh, <laughs> so the question <laughs> is, you've owned the Chateau more than three years. Why haven't you made more progress? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, I mean, again, we, whilst we've owned the Chateau for three years, we've only been living it, I say only, for, for what, over 18 months now, roughly. I mean, yes. It'll be two years in October. And whilst we may not look like we've achieved much, we've actually done a whole lot of work in that An enormous in that time. And I think probably to the point that many of well, some of you have certainly pointed out, I guess, when we went in there, when we bought the chateau, we thought, oh, this is all right, we can we can pretty much just get started on on the DIY and renovating. Um, but there was so much to undo. Um, and so actually, the, probably the first 18 months where we were coming out for a week or two weeks at a time, which maybe amassed to maybe 12 weeks over that time period, over 18 months, um, was really us just kind of taking things away and taking things down. Um, from the wine vats, which are literally in the room where we're, we're sitting now, to all the plaster on the walls, mm -hmm. um, sandblasting walls, all of that takes um, a disproportionate amount of time. And then to building up, I guess, again, part of it is constrained by finance. We'll come on to talk about that in a moment. But I think also you know, we've been juggling that with, with having a little one as well. So, um, yeah. and, and our own business. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I was already three months pregnant when we moved here, yeah. you know, almost two years ago. So my ability to do everything I wanted to do was a little bit hampered because of that, because we wanted to be a little bit careful. Then we had, obviously, some mishaps and things um, all went well, but but uh, it definitely slowed us down, not being, both of us being 100% able to do all the DIY that we wanted to. But if you think about it, there's literally not one stone in this place that we haven't touched inside and out because we've done all the sound blasting inside out. And when I say we, I mean you and Kurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, no, so, no, we don't have to think that hard to know that we've done an enormous amount of work, just us, which I never thought we could do. 
No, and I guess that's the other thing. We've been learning a whole lot of skills along the way, so it's all been, almost been a mini apprenticeship in addition to everything else we've got going yeah, on. Yeah, it makes me yawn just thinking about it. <laughs> and yeah, I'm guessing hopefully things will speed up a little bit for us. Well, September onwards when we get some childcare in, but at the same time, money's money's tight, so we'll have to see how we get on. Watch yeah. this space. And I guess to the the point of financing, like why I know some people. Have, one of the first comments we had on the very first episode was like, oh, I can't believe that, you know, someone's expecting, you know, us, other people to, to fund your renovation. And I mean, why are you on YouTube if you don't know how the, like the, the advertising aspect of that works, which is amazing, by the way. And we're so grateful to all of you for watching and bearing with the adverts because actually that gives us something. Um, but yeah, it's not enough yet. I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but the thing is, we did try and organise about financing before mm. we before we came out, and actually we For had months a, and months and months. Yeah, we had a, well, we had a loan in principle by mm. a, a reputable international bank, um, and we called up probably what four or five months before we were due to move. Mm. And they were so enthusiastic. Yeah, and we literally had all, everything saying, "Yeah, approved in principle, everything." And then when we called them, as I said, they, as they advised us to do, mm. um, you know, when, once we knew what our moving date and everything else was going to be. He said, oh, we're really sorry. We've, um, we're actually closing that, that, that branch, so we're not able to offer that loan anymore. <laughs> and so we had to start from scratch. We approached French banks and, again, just kept on hitting pretty solid stone, stone walls with that one. Mm. And I guess that's been the story ever since. We've been quite lucky in the sense that both your family and my family have been able to help us a little bit. We've had savings as well. But we've poured... It's not an exaggeration to say that we've put everything we have um, into this. And then the only hope we have now is we have not been able to say, sell our apartment in London. The, uh, the market has been, at least in our experience, yeah, yeah. has been incredibly um, slow or just people are waiting to buy or we thought it was the elections and that things would get better after that. But... Um, it's been a real struggle to sell it and even the price that we put it down to now it's um you know it's definitely not gonna yield us the kind of well the kind of money we were hoping for Absolutely. but it'd be a huge help i mean huge help when when that comes through so if when yeah if, absolutely when, um if you know anyone who's looking to buy a beautiful flat on in the greenwich. Tent, in greenwich beautiful um please send them our way uh that would be super helpful so we're not gonna i mean that's the thing we've We've, we've discussed this endlessly in terms of how the price point, like the pain point as to what we can't go under in terms of selling our apartment. And you can't sell your apartment for less than you bought it for. I mean... And people have, right? I know, I know that. But, but again, we've got to think crazy. about what it is we're trying to finance. And mm. this is probably maybe a bad time in the market. And to sell at a loss would make, not make that particular... That makes sense for us. So we'd probably be better off just yeah. hunkering down and waiting for the market to improve again. Yeah. But it means that we won't make as much progress as we'd like with obviously yeah. the renovations. But then that's where we try to, you know, um, maybe look at different ways to finance things as well. Mm. Um, and think... YouTube is definitely one, an an opportunity for a revenue stream for us, which is very very exciting. Um... Yeah, I mean at the moment it's <laughs> not quite where we would like it to be. Um, really? We've got we're, well, we're making like a hundred to hundred and fifty euros a month. It's exciting. It's, it's actually really, in fairness, like the channel took off really well when it first started and we were blown away. Like I thought we literally had maybe a hundred subscribers by maybe January. Yeah. And we had... And that would be all several, relatives. We had several thousand, but over the last few months, and maybe it was us taking too long, Nicole said the staircase was boring. It you was so boring to watch, honestly, yeah. I almost fell asleep. <laughs> but... but. But I appreciate That's the thing is some people no, but as we discussed, some people really yeah. enjoy watching that. To me, no, that's not what I want to watch. Um, but, but that's my opinion, not. And apparently, else's. someone else. But anyway, yeah. So we stalled with numbers, so we're kind of hovering around the eight and a half thousand subscriber mark. Yeah. And why is look, that? Yeah, we'd love to know. Um, is it because I spent too long kind of talking about the staircase and filming the staircase? I don't know. But the good news is the next set of renovations that we're going to be sharing with you, I think, are actually really, really extraordinary and fun um we'll try to make it fun as we were filming it so fingers crossed 
And then hopefully we can we can intersperse that with some some up to date stuff as well as, as much as we can. As you know, we are filming with Chateau DIY, which is you know a really great experience as well. Mm. Um, but it does mean that we're kind of kind of prevented from doing showing certain things um, up until they've aired in, in the UK. Mm. Um, yeah, and also I guess Patreon was the other way of, of trying to finance it. And it's interesting because obviously from the Chateau DIY show, there are lots of Chatelands that we are aware of. We don't necessarily know personally because that's not necessarily how the show has worked. No, unfortunately not. I which was, is what we were hoping for. I was hoping for <laughs> that. Because we'd love oh to kind gosh, of just make some so many new you know, friends. people in the, in, in the same situation doing silly silly renovation projects. <laughs> but we have to change that, Nick. So if yeah. you wanted to change, we need to change it because I'd love to meet people on the show and to share experiences and yeah. say, share wisdom and, and mistakes because that's how you learn and that's how you also not make them again but uh, we yeah, need to fix that because I feel like we're making probably quite a few as we're progressing yeah. we can't just host everyone yet yeah. garden party we could have a garden party that's true and yeah I don't know I guess it's interesting as well because like for example Stephanie Jarvis for the land she's posting every day pretty much mm. whereas Anna extraordinary Philippe, work yeah extraordinary work um, and there's no way simply that we could do that with everything that we've got going on. But then Anna and Philippe seem to do it once a week and they seem to have a whole massive Mahusa following. We love their show as well. Yeah. We can highly yeah, recommend it's... We can highly recommend both of their shows. So Anna and Philippe said uh, Chateau... Oh my gosh, it's just completely gone on my head. Le Fleur. Le Fleur. Fleur en Fleur, which is beautiful. But their YouTube channel is yeah, How to Renovate a Chateau mm. Without Killing Your Partner, which we've obviously yeah. taken some tips from. Yes. Because you still haven't killed me, so that... That's no, going well. I watched a lot of um, their show when I was um, breastfeeding Noah when he was tiny, tiny. So I think he grew up thinking that uh, Philip was his, was his father. He still seems <laughs> to be very, very happy every time the show comes on. And every his, time uh, his yeah his, his voice, voice comes. <laughs> <laughs> Papa, no, <laughs> don't worry. Wait, did you? We have oh, answered no, no, that no. question. Okay, yeah, so this... how we found balancing parenthood with renovating the chateau. That kind of segues quite well into what we were just talking about. Uh, incredibly, incredibly challenging, I have to say. Yeah. Um, I don't know how people do it. I mean, one of the couples also on the Chateau DIY show, Mark and Amy, they have two little ones and they had children before us. And I was just thinking, how on earth are you doing that? Because they also had their two very close uh, to each other. Mm. And uh, I mean, they must have stalled completely when it comes to the renovations because yeah. I know they have been doing things so much themselves as well. But well, and Tim and Chris just down the road as well. Oh yes, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, it's incredibly challenging. We haven't had uh, much childcare. We've had your mother's started helping us a few months ago, which was fantastic. So she helps for a couple of hours, uh, once at, or maybe twice a week if we're lucky. Which is super sweet yeah. because she's almost in her 80s and um and it's a lot to ask with such a energetic little thing as noah he's very very he's energetic. everywhere all the time yeah there's no stopping him he's like a duracell bunny and he will only stop once he passes out at yeah, night i'm gonna apologize for that because whilst i think he's inherited most in the coles genes when it comes to the kind of the viking swedish side of blue eyes, blonde hair, blue eyes. not that i'm blonde but i yeah. was when i was little. yeah he's definitely got my insane energy <laughs> oh yeah I mean, I think I was quite injured against child as well, but I, I think, no, but boys are different. Boys are more kind of, the amount of times this, our, our little son has um, hit his head, for instance. So hence, and this is actually a question I was wondering why it hasn't appeared, because in so many of the videos, he's wearing this little orange helmet. Now, we decided after him hitting his head, and he had got a massive bump on his forehead, um, we were both so traumatized by the whole thing that we thought we, we can't baby-proof our surroundings enough, so let's baby-proof Noah. So that's why we decided to buy, buy this, and I can't recommend it enough. It's a fantastic indoor-outdoor helmet that they can use everywhere, and it's breathable, and it's, it's, it's great. And it wasn't very expensive either. No. And the amount of time that helmet has saved him, because, I mean, he's... You can't be everywhere all the time, however much you want to be. I mean, he once stood on, uh, managed to get himself up on one stair, a uh, little staircase, which is here, and then literally just fell backwards within an instant. And I was just about to go get him. And But the helmet saved him. Sure, it wasn't very pleasant for him, but he didn't hurt yeah. himself yeah. as a result. So um, he's just turned around. 
Wonderful. Now, this definitely is my question because Nick is no gardener and oh, he's not very not interested in gardening at all. So that's the question we received... That's not gardening. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so the question was, what are our plans for the garden? And well, we both have massive plans. It's not just me having the garden plans, but I am the one doing the gardening work because I really enjoy it. That's where I, it's almost like meditation time for me. And it's also physical. So you get great, a great workout and get out, work out. Sorry. Um, and it's just beautiful seeing your garden flourish in front of your eyes and, and you can change, it's malleable. You change it and it changes with, what you wanted to change sometimes. Um, so we have massive plans for the garden. Uh, and another, on another episode, you're going to come with me out into the garden. Let's do it when it's not this hot because I'll be sweating. Um, and I'll show you around and ex explain exactly what I'm telling you now. But so you well, can why see don't we just yourself. leave it like that then? So we can do that for another episode. Let's do that. But the, the idea is to just cultivate the garden, fountains, water features, is going to be an absolute oasis of tranquility and cool because that's what you really need in the south yeah. of France. What is our next big project at the Chateau? When we have the money. When we I have guess the money. is the caveat. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, obviously, next week we'll be kicking off the project that we've been working on for the last kind of nine months, which we're super excited about sharing with you. But in terms of the actual next project we're hoping to do over the next few months, I suspect it will be us finishing the, the entrance hall. Actually, tomorrow, <laughs> um, my brother-in-law is he heading over and we're actually going to be hopefully finishing off the, the groundwork, the digging out, the trenching for what will be the plant room. Um, so that's happening tomorrow. Um, hopefully a little bit cooler, although it is inside for most of it, so um, that should hopefully keep us cool. But yeah, doing kind of finalising at least the floor space um, in the entrance hall would be great. Um, I don't think we're at the stage yet where we, we're going to be getting the, the massive um, arched glazed window, but that will come in, come in due course. But there's a lot to go in there. We've got the you know the block and beam floor. We need to readjust one of the wooden one of the one of the joists that's there. It's actually at a, a, an angle and thing. So there's quite a bit to do, and then we need to start building the structures up because we want toilets in there, um, pantry, those sorts of things. So yeah, it's going to be a beautiful space. It's going to be a beautiful space once we get started on it. And I think probably best leave it, leave it there. We've probably been talking for, for way too long. Yes. And Noah's probably threatening to wake up. And we need to make lunch because I haven't had any food so far and it's almost 2.30 already. Yeah, and I need to go and edit this so you can actually watch this um, this evening. So thank, look, thank you so much for, for joining us on this one. I hope it's been helpful. If you've got any more questions that you feel that you know have been burning on your mind and you're really keen to get an answer to, just drop stuff in the chat and I'm sure we'll run another one of these at some point in the, in the not too distant future. And we really appreciate and also enjoy when people put things in the chat and comments and things. So keep them coming and we'll do as best we can to answer everything. Take care and see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Well, it's not leadership. It's like I wanted to say learning. learning not learning, right? learning oh, but sorry. I was thinking leaders. Yeah, that's but very right. Right. Yeah. So much to well. Ecclesiastical last week, and I think it's been out. Nobody can say ecclesiastical. Anywho. <laughs> Sorry, we have to interrupt. There was a gecko. He's growing, is that the same little one that we had last it's, week? No, that's He's humongous. Like that's, that's like how far. How they lead themselves and how they lead other, others. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do they have cows with them to lead, to lead the cow? The shepherds? We get shepherds? <laughs>